In this video, we'll be looking at the character Crux from Of Mice and Men. These are just a few ideas of what you might want to explore should a question on Crux come up in your exam. Just a reminder that I typically create videos for students studying the IGCSE English Literature exam. Um, and so I mention context quite a bit because it's worth 50%, whereas language and structure has no marks. Um, so just keep that in mind when reviewing my videos. So first of all, he's clearly mistreated. We only know this character by the terms stable book, the N-word and crooks. We never learn his real name. He's only ever referred to by derogatory terms or his nickname and that indicates the dehumanising treatment he receives on the ranch. The first time we hear about Crooks is from Candy, as he tells George and Lenny, he gave, he, he give the stable book hell, this is talking about the boss, and then he says, you see, the stable books are N. Nice fella too. So isn't that interesting, the way that he describes that treatment? At first we learn that the boss uses Crooks as a scapegoat to take out his frustration. If you recall, he's upset because George and Lenny haven't turned up to work on time. Um, and then he goes on to explain, oh, the reason why he gave him hell is because he's an N. Like, that's an acceptable reason to mistreat someone. And so, um, and, and then he swiftly goes on to say, oh, he's a nice fella. And so this really highlights how normalised racism was, not just on the ranch, as I've written here, but just in society in general, that someone could talk so flippantly about someone being mistreated, give a reason or an explanation for that mistreatment by referring to the colour of their skin, and then go on uh, to use derogatory terms, but to say, oh, they're a really nice fella. So it just highlights, Candy doesn't even realise he's being disrespectful and he's being mean, but he is. And it just highlights how normalised racism was at the time. We learn that he is um, he is injured. He's got a crooked back where a horse kicked him in and he's also got thin, pain-tightened lips. So his back injury could be a symbol of the crippling impact living in a prejudiced society has on an individual. He's also a literal example, of course, of the tough working conditions at the time as well. And then look, about, look at where he sleeps. We'll talk about the fact that he sleeps separately from all the other workers later. But he also sleeps on a large box filled with straw. This draws parallels with the horse's bed, a horse's bed of straw. And remember, he sleeps pretty much right next to the horses. Um, so this further depicts the dehumanising condi conditions in which Crooks lives. So linking this to context, we've already mentioned a bit of context already, but this novella was set 50 years after sa slavery was abolished in the United States. And Steinbeck really uses this treatment of crooks to highlight how racist attitudes in America had not changed. African Americans were still treated like second class citizens and racist attitudes were accepted and a really normal part of life. As uncomfortable as it is for us to read these words now, people would not flinch hearing this type of language. And that's what Steinbeck, Steinbeck really wanted to create, um, recreate a society, the, the, the American society, if you like, in Of Mice and Men. So he wanted to have that element of realism and he wanted to mimic dialogue exactly how it was in that time. He's clearly powerless, um, which of course, that results in his mistreatment as well. But there are there are ways we can learn that as well. So um, he, he lives, he sleeps in the harness room and we repeatedly hear the rattle of chains in his bedroom so the repeated mention of the harness room and the continual rattling of the chains symbolizes the lack of freedom crooks has as an african-american it's almost an echo of slavery isn't it that sound that rattling of chains it's almost like yes okay the chains have gone but symbolically they haven't he's still very much chained by the racist ideals, the racist attitudes towards him and the way that affects the way he's treated. And here's a perfect example of that. We've got Curly's wife threatening him, saying, I could get you strung up on a tree so easy, 
it ain't even funny. And in reaction to that, Crux reduces himself to nothing and he says, yes, ma'am, and his voice was toneless. Curly's wife's threat to Crux relates to lynching, which we'll talk about in a moment, that's in blue. Um, and it's it, what, what's significant here is she's one of the weakest characters. And so what this helps highlight is the fact that Crux, you might argue, is the most vulnerable character on the ranch because even Curly's wife who's very weak can cause him to retreat so quickly to turn inwards to to have that yes mom robotic response this toneless voice um through absolute fear and what she threatens was absolutely a possibility in the 1930s. So the social hierarchy on the ranch is reflective of American society at the time. So Curly's wife, as a white woman, would have more power. She doesn't have much power in society, but she'd have more, way more, than a black man. So Crooks being a black man is at the bottom of the social hierarchy. The lynching of black people was common in 1930s America and the Ku Klux Klan still had a lot of power. So yes, Curly's wife could could raise something about Crooks, lie about something he did and without a fair trial he could be um, a victim of lynching. Uh, but there's also other ways that African Americans were powerless. They were hit the hardest by the economic crisis. By the end of 1932, 50% of black Americans were unemployed. In some states, people called for black people's jobs to be taken off them and to be given to white people. Um, they were also given less aid and sometimes they wouldn't even be allowed into the soup kitchens. So as difficult it, as it was for the average white person, it was so much harder for a black American. He's clearly isolated. We've already talked about him being um, living separately to the other men. Um, one thing to even look at is just to think about um, how he's not even shown much in the novella outside of chapter four. And we certainly don't see him um, really interact with many characters or at least at length apart from chapter four. So this in itself is an indication of his marginalization. He's not really part of ranch life as he's not as involved with everyone else because he's black. Um so have a look at, at these things. A li he lives in a little shed that leaned off the wall of the barn. So this is separate to the bunkhouse where all the men sleep. And the, so the setting represents the segregation of crooks from the rest of the ranch members. Um, and he openly admits eventually when he opens up a bit more to Lenny, I tell you, a guy gets too lonely and he gets sick. So he opens up and describes the painful impact of his loneliness, drawing empathy from the reader. Reader, This highlights, this is a feeling, this is a human being with feeling, okay? Not the animal that he's being treated to be like by the others on the ranch. Um, he's got feelings, he's clearly depressed by the, the poor treatment and the loneliness of the ranch. So this links to the Jim Crow laws, um, where and there are a number of laws made in America that inf um, that provided a legal basis for segregating and discriminating against African Americans. So according to these laws, the idea was, yes, all people are, have equal rights, but equal doesn't mean the same and equal doesn't mean together. Equal can mean separate. So yes, as an example, yes, African Americans can have education, but they can't have education alongside a white person. We're going to have to have African-American schools and so on. Um, and so there was this clear divide, this clear separation between whites and blacks um, during this time. And that is what um, Steinbeck is trying to replicate in his novel. He is very, um, what you might describe as aloof, um, especially the way he treats Lenny. Um, so he's he's a little he's a little mean to Lenny at the when Lenny first comes into um his bedroom. He says, I don't blame the guy you travel with for coming for keeping you out of sight. Suppose George don't come back. So he's really being um quite mean and man manipulative to Lenny. He relishes in the fact that he's upsetting Lenny. Lenny's getting more and more worked up. 
Um, and what, he's, what Steinbeck is doing here, first of all, what Steinbeck didn't want to do is create any character that seemed perfect. All the characters um, have these darker sides to them. And he does this with, cro- to, with crooks as well. This is a mean side to crooks. And I think what he's doing here is highlighting how power is drawn from weakness. If you ca- create a society where there's a clear divide between like the most powerful and, and the, the weakest then you encourage people to exploit each other's weaknesses to make you feel power or to have just a sense, tiny sense of power. So in a time when crooks would usually be the most vulnerable in the room, he uses this opportunity to exploit Lenny's naivety to feel an ounce of power. This is a man who doesn't feel much power in his life and this is the the only opportunity he might get. And so even though it's mean, he does it to just get that sense of power over someone else. Um, and look what he says when people come in you've got no rights to come in my room he kept his distance and demanded that other people kept theirs so he's he's very much um, keen to keep himself to himself so you could argue that's because he's used to being on his own that's what's made him aloof Um, but it could be argued that he pushes others away to protect himself it's dangerous for him to be around white people Look at the way they've treated him. Look at the way society treated black people at this time. Wouldn't there be a natural suspicion surrounding white people if you're a black person at this time? And so is this, um, is, is this actually self-preservation? You can't think of anything good that will come of him um, interacting with white people. So after the poor treatment he has received from the white community, why would he want to get, go near them? Or could this be viewed as a political act? Crook protects the few rights he has, and the one right he has is segregation. Well, I have, I have a right. We are equal, but we're not to be around each other. That's my right. Get out of my room. So is this his only political play that he has? And again, it's this idea of it exploiting um, the bit of power that he has. He is, however, incredibly intelligent. We have the gold rim spectacles that you might argue are a symbol of his intelligence. But going further into that, his room is full of books, but the two that are pointed out, um, one is a mauled copy of the California Civil Code of 1905, and the other is a tattered dictionary. So both items are clearly heavily used, suggesting Crooks has spent a considerable time educating himself about his rights. His rights are important. The fact that the California Civil Code is mauled might indicate his frustration with the injustice of the law. I can imagine him reading it and getting frustrated because it is unjust, okay, for, to use um, kind of legal language to get around basic prejudice and to legalise it and give um, and make it sound uh, more official than it actually is when it really comes down to just blatant racism. So you can imagine the frustration and the anger he might experience when he's reading through um, this policy. So this evokes sympathy for crooks whose desperate attempts at understanding his rights seem futile when he is so poorly treated. This is a man who's really taken time to educate himself about his position in his in society and the rights that he has. But look at his situation, look at where he has to live, look at how the others refer to him and how they treat him. And so you link this to context, a black person's right to vote was in the 15th Amendment of the Constitution of the United States, that was from 1870. However, it was common practice to find reasons other than race to deny a man the right to vote. And one of those common ploys was to demand that a voter should be able to read, which disproportionately affected people of colour. So that was one way of getting um, around uh, how black people wouldn't um, be able to vote so him educating himself is really important because he's got this whole system working against him the intelligence of crooks also challenges the stereotype of african americans at the time as uneducated and ignorant so steinpeck really wanted through the character of crooks uh, for people to recognize the potential of the black community and see them as equally as intelligent equally as capable as as the white community 
So it's up to you. This is a bit of critical analysis here. Is he pessimistic or is he realistic? So first of all, you may notice that there's a small electric globe um, that threw a meagre yellow light in his room. And that symbolizes the little hope Crooks has in his life. And we see that reflected in, in the way he speaks. He says to Lenny when they're talking of this dream, um, Candy's there as well, nobody never gets to heaven and nobody gets no land. Having seen men come and go with the same dream and the same failure, Crooks has become disillusioned by the American dream. He's seen people like Lenny and Candy and George before and it never works out. Having been also, think about this, at the receiving end of the worst of humanity, okay? He's seen the worst of humanity in the way he's been treated. Why would he have any faith in God? He sees no reason to believe in a god that's why he doesn't just say about land he says nobody never gets to heaven so it's even affected his faith um and then look at the end this is just after curly's wife threatens him with getting him lynched and for a small i haven't included this in the slide but for a small moment he does actually jump on the idea of this dream and say you know i'll, I'll work for free let me let me join but arch straight after Curly's wife threatening him, he says, well, just forget it, said Crooks. I didn't mean it, just fall in. I wouldn't want to go no place like that. So he only allows himself to be seduced by the dream for a short moment. And this sets him in contrast to the other characters. Curly's wife has a, a long life dream of being a movie star. George and Lenny has this dream of owning their own ranch and so on. Mm. Um, he can't afford to have a dream like that or at least to hold on to a dream uh, for very long. So Curly's wife's threat serves as a reminder of the racist world in which he lives where a black man is considered a second-class citizen. Unlike the other characters who all have dreams of their own, Crooks is even robbed of the ability to dream. In many ways, this makes his life even more unbearable as he doesn't even have the privilege of mentally escaping this brutal life like the other characters do. Because you can, of course, say, you know, the whole point that Steinbeck was trying to make about the American dream is that it, it's, ne it's totally unrealistic. But there was, is an element in his message that actually the American dream was still important because it kept people going and it helped them get through a really, really tough life. He doesn't even have that mental escape. So this is, so his life, again, is just depicted as so much harder than anyone else on the ranch. So, of course, when you're writing an essay on a character, you'll want to consider what's the overall intention, what's the overall message from Steinbeck? Why did Steinbeck create Crooks? And here are some things that you might want to think about. He wanted to highlight the mistreatment of African-Americans. He wants to challenge the stereotypes of Afri African-Americans at the time as uneducated and ignorant. He wants to shine a light on the brutality of American society at the time. He also wants to call into question the actions of a supposed Christian country, especially with um, Crook's quote, nobody gets to heaven. And he also wants to challenge the concept of the American dream and whether it truly was for anyone. And of course, it's not for Crook's, okay? Um, please, these are just a few ideas. There's plenty more that you can say about Crooks. These are just some, some of my ideas. Of course, the best thing about literature is it's all up for interpretation. So feel free to share your own ideas in the comment section.